I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. All right, here we go. What's going on, everybody? So here I am in Toronto. Not usually in this uh, sort of situation, only for my live chats, but here on the screen, you see Mr. Scott Michaels, somewhat of an older friend of mine, old friend, I don't mean old, <laughs> an old friend of mine by about eight years now. And a lot of viewers on my channel, Scott, know who you are. Like when I put in my Facebook group and the community page and my DMs this morning were packed with questions for you. Oh, how fun. How fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for asking me. And uh, I'm sorry that you're in Toronto right now. It's about 85 here. Or it was about 85 today. So it's it doesn't really take nice. you that long just to get in, just to get that little dig in. Yeah, it's, pour, <laughs> it's pouring rain. It's actually kind of warm out today. It's pouring rain. It's more is going to snow. But yeah, yeah. It looks, Toronto sucks around this time of year. But I am wearing my Detroit shirt in honor of you. <laughs> cool. If you don't know, Scott is from Detroit. Motown. Yeah. So uh, let's let's start. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to tell a little story first about how we met because we've known each other a long time. But I don't think you remember. But it's pretty it's always funny to me when I think about it, because I was uh, I guess you would call it. Uh, let's see here. It's on here. Oh, Hello. cool. <laughs> so a big fan of your uh, your website. And then when I went to California for the first time in 2012, my. Uh, the two things I want to see the most were the Melrose Place apartment and your museum. That was it. And then everything else, you know, there's a million things I want to see. So I went by your your place when it was on Hollywood Boulevard, right? Or Sunset. Sunset. Yeah. Sunset. Yeah. And uh, you weren't there. And somebody said, okay, you'll be there tomorrow. Went back the next day and I walked in and you were behind your desk, like past the row of chairs. And I just yelled out, Scott Michaels. And the look when you you shot your head up and you're like, yeah, I don't know, I'm just a big fan. I really want to meet you. And you were telling me afterwards that you're kind of on guard because you get you get some weirdo, especially in that area. Yeah. Someone coming into your into your museum and office and yelling your name at the top of their lungs. Maybe not <laughs> the best introduction. <laughs> no, I've been I've been lucky where I, I've only been. Uh by i've I've only been approached by people who know who i am and don't like me a couple of times but that was okay so right. uh but it's but there we just had the the influx of crazy people so uh yeah so um yeah did but you that, get that actually did you get just random people all the time coming into yeah. your place just for whatever yeah yeah with that one especially there on sunset yeah. our last location on santa monica boulevard uh wasn't as bad because we were kind of in an industrial area although uh, the cemetery, Hollywood Cemetery, is right across the street. There weren't a lot of foot traffic on that road, so uh, it was lesser. That, therefore, when anyone came in, it, they were really crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, yeah. they they earned it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, right. uh, you're, so, yeah. You're both were great. Both. I mean, the the your one on Sunset had such a cool little charm to it. Yeah. I mean, it was it was small. You needed the bigger space, and then the bigger one was just awesome. And I was there when you were putting it together when you first got the car. And that's actually, a lot of people are asking about the Jane Mansfield car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you obviously still have it. Oh yeah, we haven't got, we haven't got rid of any of our, right. of our artifacts. You know, they're all in storage. Okay, so we'll go, so actually I'll ping pong back to Detroit because the questions that I get most, that I got mostly about you is, uh, let's see, from Lorna Walsh, Love the last name Walsh, 9210. Could you ask Scott, will he do tours of Hollywood in the future? So is it still going to do uh, the part of tours? What's happening? No, probably. Uh, well, no, not in our capacity now. It's, it's possible in the future. But uh, but after 10 months of, uh, you know, no business, uh, we, you know, we can't hold on anymore. So uh, we decided to leave Los Angeles. And, and here we are now in the desert, 100 and so miles away. But um you know, we, we just can't afford it anymore. We just couldn't, you know, we're despite the fact we're closed down, we still got to still have car payments, van payments, yeah. still have insurance payments. And I, I mean, the taxes, it just, it's just too much. And uh, so we just had to, to cut our losses and uh, it, it blows, but that's just, it's just, the, it's just the way it is. Um, in Hollywood, I don't think so, but who knows what will happen there. Maybe here in Palm Springs, because it's got a really cool vibe to it, Hollywood-wise. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that's why Troy and I chose it here, because it does have that history, that, you know, Sinatra and, and Jane Mansfield and 
Maryland and all those people hung out here. So uh, the people here know who those people are. And Hollywood is just I, I, there's too much there's too much going on that's tentative right now. Yeah. And nobody knows where it's going to land. And I'm too old to sit and wait. You know, right. I, I've done this already. I, you know, I'm from Detroit, like you said. I, I watched the city change drastically, and uh, and I'm just too old to sit around and wait to see how it all turns out. It just uh, I'm looking for my own peace of mind now. It's too bad. Sorry, my dog's right here beside me, crying for some reason. I just had him out, but. Uh, so I guess I like a year from now, hopefully, okay, all right. Hopefully when the pandemic is over, <laughs> he's just crazy. When the pandemic is over, I mean, that's it's, that's a huge hole in Hollywood tourism. Like you're not being there because you 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 said it to me uh, in person and I've seen you say it on videos. Like there's no tours like your tours and there's the ones you go, I went on one that was okay. I took a friend from Texas on a tour where, um, like past the Hollywood house and, and you would recommend, I can't remember which one it was. You said it was good for that sort of thing. Who wants to see like celebrity homes, but mm -hmm. there's nothing that's going to replace yours, all your different tours. Yeah. I mean, if it's always, if, if I could just show people cool stuff, which is all I ever wanted to do, yeah. uh, that'd be great. But it's, it's so it's about 20% of showing people cool stuff. And the rest of it is just, bullshit you know i fighting with neighborhoods and fighting with the city and taxes i mean i'm not even kidding you taxes are insane and I, i'm looking I, I haven't made any money in almost a year and i got a stack of those tax bills that i have to pay uh you know i just uh you know maybe maybe here i'll hook up with another tour company maybe in la you know maybe i'll do a dearly departed tour once a week with yeah. some other tour company but i'm um you know i'm through i'm <laughs> through with jumping through these hoops you know, i just want to i just you might open Pardon? a museum, though, possibly. In possibly. I, I would, I, you know, I'd love to pop in and, and do a cool tour and, and leave. But it's just there's it's it, all the other stuff. And it sounds like I'm whining, but I mean, 16 years of it. And, and, oh, yeah. uh, and then and then to achieve what I did and then it's all gone. Yeah. Which is the way things are. It's gone for everybody. I'm not I'm not you know, I'm not special in that regard. Uh, we've all gotten hit by it. But um, I'm just too old for the fight anymore. I, I, if I was still doing it, it'd be another thing. But since I've had a break, I realized that, you know, I just don't want to do this anymore. So, uh, you know, the YouTube stuff, that the virtual stuff, the podcast, those are things I'm enjoying doing, kind of doing what I was doing. And as I said, maybe another tour company wouldn't mind doing a tour once a week with me. Hey, I'm down with that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I, I, you know, just the rest of the stuff, the baggage is just no fun. So I, I will say that you do have a YouTube channel and it's going really well from what I can tell. I mean, I watch it all the time. I love it. And you have a Patreon as well, which I have as well, but we're here to promote you. So you guys can uh, join Scott's Patreon to help him out and to help the his channel grow, which is uh, it's a really that. no nonsense sort of uh, straightforward channel. Like when you when you say what you're going to do, you you're there, you show it, you do it, you get the hell out. <laughs> it provides so I, much information. I, I, it's sort of like you know i call them little bios you know i don't i'm not as consistent as i should be but when something hits me i'll just boom boom i'll go and do it and i'd like this the frank sinatra thing you know that i, I put up a couple of weeks ago yeah i just happened i mean he's buried you know about three miles from here and i happened to stop by and he's like well there's a new tombstone i never you know and i as apparently i was the only one that knew that so yeah, I was I able no to clue. put it together really quickly. Yeah. And uh, even the people that live here, the bloggers that live in Paul Springs didn't know that. So it was kind of cool when, when you find something, you get excited about it again okay. and you know, you get a real thrill about it. So I enjoyed that. I still like doing, you know, being a tour guide. I love being a tour guide. Yeah. Um, virtual yeah. tours you're yeah. giving. Yeah. Basically the same thing yeah. like what I'm doing, but you're giving virtual tours. And like I said, you, you've got the same, it's the same sort of, um, uh, when I watch your channel, it's the same. I've been on three of your tours that I think, yeah, I think, I think three, one with you and two with Brian and mm -hmm. who's awesome. And it's when you watch your channel, it's like being on, on your tour bus again. So it's yeah, I, I do. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And it is weird. It's culture shock being out here because you know, you know I, I go from meeting dozens of people a week and mm -hmm. showing people around for hours at a time. And now, I'm, you know, maybe I'll see five, six people a day if I make an effort. So it's it's a real strange existence. It's going to be, I mean, with COVID, everything is. You know, once movie theaters and restaurants start opening up again, it's it'll be fine. But we're all sort of shell-shocked. And, mm -hmm. and, and um, 
you know, after after so many years of doing what I'm doing, it's so weird to have a, a job now that's virtual. <laughs> you know, I'm still having a, like a I should be going somewhere. You know, I should you know should I put papers in my hands and yeah, stuff. it is weird. It is weird. <laughs> did you do the did Palm, I guess Palm Springs didn't have because I was there uh, last year. Well, no, 2019 and 2018 in Palm Springs, but I was there for their Christmas parade celebration. Man, you yeah. haven't seen a Christmas celebration until you've seen one in Palm Springs, hosted by <laughs> Lorna Luft. <laughs> that was wild. Shirley Dudes and Lorna Luft everywhere in December. Yeah. It was That's crazy. Very, it was yeah, it was an yeah, awesome. Yeah, it is very very gay out here. It's so gay. <laughs> it is so gay gay gay. It's where all the old gays go. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, Steve, the graveyard guy. Do you know him? Have you watched? Uh, I haven't movie? met him yet. No, I have not he, met him. He's a good friend of mine. You guys should definitely meet up and, and yeah. film something together. He's yeah, he reached out a couple of months ago when I first moved here. We haven't hooked up yet, but uh, for sure. Yeah, he's I've you been, know he's really nice. People have reached out to me and said, "Hey, you know, I I I know this, I know that. Let's get together." And it's it's sort of like uh, there's a slash people wanted to share their story slash new meet, and I don't mean that in this in a in a physical term i mean it's like somebody new to share stories with right. and it's neat to be able to to uh to take advantage of that to be welcomed and it of is course. welcoming here it's yeah. so people smile you know and when somebody says hey have a great day it, it's so weird because it's shocking yeah, you know and you just you know so I, I lived in england for a long time and i said even if they hated your guts they were nice to your face <laughs> and i like that <laughs> and i saw i saw a picture of you with your ex on last night when i was going through some stuff i could i i tell you we all well some people maybe not uh don't know who your ex is he's pretty famous graham norton correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah i saw some pictures last night from i guess it was late 80s early 90s it was late 90s actually late 90s yeah. oh yeah yeah so um so yeah that was fun that was an interesting time living in in london and being part of that whole orbit was was kind of fun i um uh, yeah i enjoyed it it was uh certainly have a lot of experiences that would never have happened it's right. a little bit like living in la and when you have when you're with somebody who is you know famous because he's a graham's a, a talk show host for people that don't know i think he's the well i think he's He's on the BBC, and I think he might be the number one show he's in got, in he's got to be. On the BBC. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, but when I when we were together, it was early, early days. So the guests on his show were a little bit, a little bit more low rent. Now he gets, you know, everyone with a new movie. Yeah. And back then it was like, you know, the mother from the Waltons and stuff, yeah. which is more my speed anyway. Right. <laughs> you know, I think you got uh, to meet some of the royal family, didn't you? Pardon? Didn't you meet some of the royal family? No, 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 no. I've seen them all, but no, I never, I never met any of them. I don't think so. No, no, no. No, okay, no. Yeah, he gets, uh, he gets. I mean, a row. He of would never. None of the royals would be on his show. No, no I guess no not. No. <laughs> no, no. I thought I, I'm, I'm getting confused. Something else. Maybe you said somebody back then that you had met. But so you grew up in Detroit, and you grew up at a very interesting intersection, which is what I find interesting. That's how you kind of got your interest in what you do, right? Yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, if you Google mapped it, it's not that interesting to look at you know we're not we're not talking about eight lanes in each direction but it was set up in such an odd way that there was a traffic island in front of my house in a four-way intersection and at nighttime when drunks would be barreling down the street they would assume they can go straight and continue on the street but there was a circular traffic island with a big light pole in the middle of it so people were forever wrapping their cars around that thing and, uh, you know, so we'd be asleep and we could hear it. We could tell the cars that are going by. You could tell they're not, they're going too fast. They're not going to make it. And sure as anything, you'll hear the screech and the pow. And, uh, and we had a whole uh, system, you know, my, my one sister would uh, run outside and, and to see if they could help. The, the other one would grab towels, you know, we'd let them in the house to sit so they can call, if they were able to, we'd certainly call an ambulance or the police, you know, so we had a whole system going on and it wasn't, it wasn't like, it was weird, sure, in retrospect, but it was just something that we grew up with. So it wasn't something that uh, it was our normal. You yeah. know, I know it wasn't a lot of normal for a whole lot of other people, but uh, but it was for us. So we used to spend our time and my brother and sisters on the sofa, kneeling on the sofa, looking out the window in the winter. And, you know, this from Toronto. I mean, I'm not that far, Detroit. Yep. You can tell you can tell the cars and you can tell they're not going to make it through. A, they're, they're not going to be able to break through a light when it's ice. Yep. You know, so you can see it coming. And it's like they're swerving and then they're swerving. And it's there you can see it a mile away. Yeah. When but you, it, was just, it was our way. It was, 
it was passing time and and we weren't disappointed it was a fascinating way to grow up <laughs> <laughs> yeah right down the street from my childhood home where uh well, where I grew up is it was for about ten years the deadliest intersection in Toronto as well, and it's crazy. And it's and it's exactly what it is. It's people who, when all of a sudden, when it, the snow starts and then the rain, they forget how to drive. They yeah, forget, yeah. They just forget that you know you can't. And it looks drive. like you know they call it the black ice. You know, when it's yeah. raining and then it freezes and you don't realize, and it just looks like a wet road. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty. It's pretty pretty treacherous and then over the years you know because Detroit was not a very nice place uh and I used to work in a lot of the bars that were really shitty areas and I knew I knew several people that have been murdered over the years um you know there, there were a couple of high school kids I went with a girl that used to work at a Burger King was shot in the face and killed uh a couple blocks from my house um you know it, it another girl was was murdered in front of a drugstore near my house uh, you know, so I just I knew these people and it wasn't like I'm not I'm not trying to impress you. It just no, it was no. just I, I got expe- I got exposed to this stuff at a really early age. And it was just my way of, you know, it was just the way it was. Of course, it was shocking when they happened. It wasn't like, oh, there's another murder. But, um, you know, it was just it was just something I was exposed to. Do you have family still in Detroit? Uh, outside of Detroit, I still have uh, a brother and a sister in a, about an hour outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. I, I mean, I go I up until, you know, 10 months ago, whenever the hell this whole whole shit happened. I mean, I was going to Detroit three or four times a year. I love mm-hmm. it. There. I think it's great. Yeah. It's a great city. It's got some, you know, it's got its issues. Sure. Because yeah, it, it's, you know, I, I grew more appreciative of the city when I left it. That's yeah. for sure. When you have a choice to go there, it's like anywhere. You, you know, you choose to go to visit. It's fantastic. Uh, now, when I go home, I appreciate it more and I, and I do more research. Uh, I didn't go to the Motown Museum until I moved away from Detroit, you know, so yeah. it's one of those it's one of those strange things. But, uh, uh, you know, Detroit is is if you choose to be there, it's a lot of fun. If you have to be there, it was a whole different thing. But yeah. there was none of that. There was none of that Renaissance business going on when I left it in the 80s. It was uh, my old neighborhood. You know, my house still exists about two blocks in either direction does. But the rest of them all burned out. I mean, my 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 high school is closed down. I think my grade school is probably closed down, but all my, you know, my friend's houses are burned out and, you know, it's, and there's, there's an element of that that really attracts me. You know, they call it the, they call it, um, ruin porn. You know, it's like, it's, uh, it's when the ruins of these destroyed buildings, like you've probably seen the Packard plant. Oh, I've been uh, in there and done a video video from there. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's when you're in there, it is like porn, you know, it is to some people. It's like being in, a shipwreck, yeah. you know, and all those, I used to work at an old movie theater uh, downtown, uh, one of those old grand, you know, 5,000 seat movie palaces, and it was all falling apart. And there was a real romance to that, you know, I loved that. Uh, and it's like LA in a way, Hollywood, I loved Hollywood. And I liked being able to see these old beat up buildings and going, oh my gosh, you know, uh, uh, I'll just pull a name out, you know, Charlie Chaplin or somebody used to live there, or used to hang out there and here's this picture. And so much of that is gone now, too. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just so sad and so upsetting that I just don't want to be there anymore. Yeah. Uh, you you ruminate on the fact that Los Angeles does not uh, embrace its pop culture history properly. Like they, mm-hmm. they tear down things. Same in Toronto. Things get torn down. That's it. They're gone. And Los Angeles has a thousand times more pop culture history on every corner, pretty much. Yeah. You know, but like the whole block where the Parisian florist was, you know, where Marilyn and, and they used to get her flowers done. The entire block, the Viper Room, that's gone. The whole, I mean, it's not gone yet. It's but not the whole yet, block yeah. has been, has been uh, d- you know, slated for demolition. You know, entire city blocks of uh, uh, are just being gone. And uh, I, I don't know. It's just again, I, I, I'm still. It's still pretty raw for me, which is why I'm probably complaining more yeah. now. Uh, but um, you know, it just, I'm just tired of being upset that's what it is and even though my business is still existing i could still technically do tours if i was legally allowed to right now yeah um it's uh i don't know man it's just it's heartbreaking it really is but is is now because i know the viper room is slated for demolition but i've heard that there's a chance that it's going to survive do you think is or is no it's going to be gone eh Nobody would know that part. I mean, it might stick around for a few more years because of things the way they are, but no, it, it's, they're not going to, that's prime real estate. Yeah. So no, that's, that's gone. It's uh, at some point will be very soon. I'm sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sunset Sunset. That's the other thing is that, is that the building hasn't stopped. The demolition hasn't stopped, even though, um, you know, things are, are really bad right now in L.A. with uh, with the homeless population and the mentally ill population, uh, you know, in the tent cities. And these tent cities are springing up next door to condos that are being built right now and they're being, you know, half a million dollar condos. Right. So it's it's really strange. I don't it, it feels like it's like this big enema that's happening and all these people being pushed out. Somebody's coming in. I don't know who that's going to be. But it's not, you know, there's so many people just bailing because uh, they don't want to sit around and wait. Right. Okay. But it's so, happening. But all that building is happening. It's it's just not stopping. That's going to look happening. a lot different in a few years from, yeah. like, I, like I, I'm lucky I got there in 2012. We started going regularly. Got to see sunset as sunset. <laughs> but I, 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 I've seen the changes over the past eight years of going. I've seen the changes. Yeah. You just imagine. Like, it's sad. It's, you you want to see those clubs and weird stores and stuff and it's just soon it's going to be i don't go you know not necessarily hanging out at the clubs at night but still want to drive by i love yeah. driving on sunset but soon it's just gonna be condo 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 yeah you know? yeah 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 and so so you understand it just um you know like i said it's still a bit raw for me which is why i'm, I'm kind of a little bit more serious about it but uh uh you know covid has affected a lot of people and and homelessness has affected a lot of people and drugs have affected a lot of people. Yeah. And I just don't want to sit around and wait to see how it all ends. Well, it's good. It's good that you're in Palm Springs. It's a great place. I love it there. So my, okay. So a lot, I've got a lot of questions. Well, not a lot, but about one subject, which will be Charles Manson. So before we get to that, I want to talk about, um, because there's so many cases and subjects that I love. My personal one that I've always had an interest in for a long time is the Wonderland murders. Like pretty much mm -hmm. when I land in L.A., I drive to uh, Carrollwood Drive to the Michael Jackson house after leaving the airport just to take a look. I've done about 18 videos from there, but just to take a look. And then I'll go right to the Hollywood Hills up to Wonderland like uh -huh. that that night because I love seeing the house at night. So if anybody doesn't know, John Holmes was part of a murder uh, that that happened on Wonderland Avenue. Four people were killed. Right. I believe it was four people were uh, bludgeoned to death. And John Holmes, a porn star, was involved. But you got actually inside the house, and you have yeah. that on your channel too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was something. Uh, you know, being that uh, uh, my people reach out to me and they're so kind to me, like you. I mean, you've you've given me so many wonderful things for the museum. You know, the the M and M, the piece of M and M's house. I've never seen. <laughs> you know, and I used to work right there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, the piece of the uh, the tree from my girl. And you give me some great stuff. I got yeah, and, okay. and I've got, I've got a bag full of stuff for you, and I'm gonna show this, but you can't say what it is. You know what it is, but I haven't put up the video yet. But this is okay. Part of the what's going to you soon. But I've got a I've got a that bag is... full of stuff still from. I gave you the stuff from Seattle, so then I've got stuff from my Texas trip and out west. And this is that's so cool. This is I really season. hope to, that I can open up that museum here. I really do. Because I think that people, you know, all I ever wanted to do is sit behind a counter and talk to people and show cool stuff. Now, you know, yeah. before I wanted to show people cool stuff out on the streets, but now, I'm, you know, it's really cool to, I, I just want one of those stupid little roadside places with a big sign that says, you know, see Jane Mansfield's. That's Death really Car cool. That's a great <laughs> idea. And I think you also said taking it on tour, like taking, like, taking Dearly Departed on the road, right? Yeah. Yeah, somebody, uh, I entertained the idea for a little while. Somebody was selling Dana Plato's uh, mobile motorhome. I heard your podcast it. about that, yeah. <laughs> and I think that would be a hoot just to, you know, to, to, to tie the car up to it and go around and show this stuff. But uh, but what do you do with it at nighttime? You know what I mean? I don't know. It just seems like you stay uh, overnight in Dana Plato's <laughs> motorhome. Yeah, yeah, I mean that would have to have like electric fences and poison darts around it. You but know? Like that, I mean that fascinates me because I always wonder like what happened, like the the tour bus where Scott Weiland passed away from Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, where's that tour bus now? It's like, out there somewhere. Yeah, the VIN number is written down. Somebody's got it. For and sure. as soon as you got, you were talking about it on the podcast, because I, I re-listened to about four of them in the past four days, and the Different Strokes one was one that I listened And by the way, if anybody doesn't know, uh, there is a Dearly Departed podcast with uh, Michael Dorsey and yourself, Michael Dorsey, film director. And yeah, and I was saying, and, and just as you were getting to the part about where you tell the story, somebody offered you uh, to buy Dana played the, the bus, the, the sorry, the uh, motorhome she died on. I was like, I was like, what ever happened to that motorhome? And then answer my question. Mm -hmm. 
So somebody yeah. offered for you to come into the Wonderland house? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. So so certain times, you know, people that have access to places, you know, people, somebody said, hey, you want to go to Universal? I'll take you in there. I work there. And uh, and a couple of real estate people that I know have reached out to me over the years and say, this place is empty. I know the code for the key. Go now. So I'm like, OK, that's all you got to say. So I called Mike Dorsey up and, and he grabbed his camera and we went and we were able to uh, get in and, and just kind of walk around the place. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. And I mean, and there's I, 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 the Wonderland thing has never been something that I've, I've chosen to study uh, very much. I know a bit about it. But it was something to uh, be able to to be in those rooms because what I find fascinating because the Wonderland murders, John Holmes was involved. Four people or five, no, three people were bludgeoned, and the fourth one lived. Or was, was it four, it four died and one lived? One lived. lived. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's the first time that a, a, a detective had recorded this by video yeah. while the victims were still in it. So the, the, the detectives got the video camera, real old style. Yeah. And he's like, in the first victim is laying the south southwesterly pattern two, you know, two feet from the wall, et cetera. And, you know, they're filming with these with these victims in it. Yeah. And when they made the movie about it, starring Val Kilmer called Wonderland, uh, uh, when they re released it on DVD for an extra feature was this crime scene, the real crime scene footage on the DVD for your entertainment, mm -hmm. which I think is really wild well, you know i'm glad to see it but i think it's really inappropriate but yeah. then who am i to see you know who's not my not for me to judge i got it for that reason because yeah. history historically was fascinating so to be able to take that video and walk through the place and see it you know with the with the victims in it that were on the dvd the real victims to be able to go there and recreate that in those empty rooms was really something else it was yeah. um it was really wild it was really well. Wow. I mean, it's it, that's one of my favorite videos of yours that you've ever done. And um, somebody asked, and now let me find where they where they did ask it. Well, here, a Angel Sutton, who just joined my Patreon, and she's a fellow Canadian, I believe, or she's fascinated by the fact I'm Canadian because she likes to say A a lot. But she's, what are the qualifications for it to be an actual death hag? <laughs> admit it to yourself. The first step is to admit it to yourself. <laughs> that's, good, that's perfect. It's, it's funny because when the internet first started, I mean, to be accessible to everybody, and that was around 97, 90, 96, 97, 98. Um, my first, I got my first computer and started my website in about 98. And everyone thought that they were the only ones that were interested in that sort of thing. Or they were kind of ashamed to say they wanted to know how Janis Joplin died or actually see where Janis Joplin died. So, uh, so I started putting those photographs online. That's back when I was 35 millimeter and I had to scan them in and upload them. It took a million years. And, uh, but it was, it was a virtual tourism. Again, it was so, something I loved. And I was I, one of the first people to do that. There was Find a Grave, uh, which started before me. And then Jim and I became friends. And I said, well, do you mind when I start my website if I call Find a Death? And he's like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. So, so, um, so find it that happened that way. And people, I was getting emails from all over the place from people saying, Oh my God, this is so cool. Uh, you know, now there's entire, you know, cable networks devoted to this, but, uh, before then it was very minimal information. And, uh, that was back when you could still, you know, spend thousands of dollars a night gambling on your TV or see porn. If you wanted to, we could still do that, but, um, on your computer. So it just, it was early days, it was yeah. very, very early days before Google even existed. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's packed with information. It's uh, the only one I did. Um, and I asked you first because I like because I'll get information from each other. But I remember I did Ennis Cosby because I really wanted to see the location, you know, off of the 405 where mm -hmm. where that all went down. Then I got all the locations from Find a Death. I, but I, like I said, I asked you first, do you mind if I, you know, use your information to film a YouTube video about it? But the amount of information that you pack in is incredible. The minutia and the details. Yeah, I, I sort of like collecting. It's it's I always say it's the things you didn't know or didn't think you'd care about. Like who would who would want to know Elvis's phone number? Well, I would, you yeah. know. And then, you know, that was I mean, it, it, it's sort of sort of a weird choice, but I'm mean, like when we talked about the Manson case or the Tate LaBianca case, you know, I went to the library. 25 years ago to get the old microfiche to find out what was showing on TV when the murders happened, you know, because right. I wanted to know what was going on in the rest of the city. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's sort of the nerdy stuff that I've always been really, really into. And, 
And and that's apparently people respond to that. Yeah. Well, okay. So then that's going to bring it to Charles Manson because I've got so many questions and a lot of questions. Uh, so Spicoli, with the profile pic of Spicoli, uh, thinks that you're a great choice for me to have on my channel. Thanks, Spicoli. Uh, but he wants to know if, if you think Tex Watson will ever divulge any more details about the murders. You know, I mean, it's it realistically, these should be called the Tex Watson murders. Manson was sort of the figurehead that they they pinned it on, and 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 he stepped up to that. He deserved that. But as far as the the monster in the group, it was certainly Tex Watson more so than Manson. And uh, and no, I don't. These people couldn't keep their mouth shut for you know decades. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what he's got to gain. He's not getting out. We know that. No. But when Leslie got denied the last time, that was when I figured, okay, it's not going to happen for any of them. How many and of them are left in prison alive still? Tex and who else? Tex and Kremwinkle and um, uh, uh, Van Van Houten. Van Houten, she's yeah. still alive, right? Oh. Yeah, she just had COVID, but and she just had another smackdown from the governor. So, um, so yeah, no, they, they won't get out. But I don't think Tex, I don't think Tex will ever divulge anything. Yeah. Be interesting if those if those tapes got out because when he was first arrested, they interviewed him. His attorney, I think, interviewed him, and uh, and it's still under sort of some sort of confidentiality. But uh, and I think Texas lawyers got involved with that, so those tapes won't be released. That would be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. If, will he learn anything more from it? But uh, and that's the weird thing about the case is because there's always something more to learn. That's that's the weird thing. It's a it's 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 a rabbit hole that's impossible to get out of. Like once you go yeah. down, it's, it's, yeah. it's read. Yeah. I mean, and you're such an expert on the case that you were a consultant for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So a mm -hmm. lot of people have asked me about that. Um, what did they ask specifically? Uh, uh, so let me see here. Somebody asked specifically about that. Oh, did it, did you find it was a believable portrayal? This is from Rosanna, who's a regular watch my channel, Rosanna Wright. Did you believe it was a believable sense of the Manson murderers? Was it a good portrayal of it? I mean, obviously it goes off the rails into a completely different ending, but... Yeah, the only thing that, that I think is uh, that's portrayed are their lives. You know, because every that that's they showed them as human beings. I don't know what the others were like as far as Bukowski and Folger, but as far as I know, Sharon and Jay were like that. Were really likable people, and uh, accuracy-wise, you know, yeah, uh, is, the sets were different, and the you know the murders are certainly different. So it's hard. It's a difficult question. I, I think it represents 1969 Los Angeles and Hollywood really, really well. As far as I know, Tate and Seabrain, for sure. I have no idea about the other two. Right. But that's all as far as the similarities go, isn't it? Did you get to go to a lot of the different sets? Or just uh, how many days were you on set for? Like, did you see... Okay, now there, there's some... I mean, it was I was I was only on it a few times. I was at Seabrain Salon, which didn't show up in the, uh, in the film. It will show up in whatever four-hour version he releases. They built a Spawn Ranch and they... Uh, and they built, you know, a, a block of Hollywood Boulevard. Right. Uh, it was really accurate as far as all that stuff went. You know, they they went they took literally photographs of every car parked at the Spawn Ranch and recreated them. And that was that was like time travel. That was really insane. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some things haven't changed that much, like the El Coyote. That was uh, well, that was that's still the same as it ever was. So. Uh, but as far as 69, 1969 goes, it's always been my favorite year. And that's why Tarantino and I, that's why he reached out to me uh, because of the documentary that Mike and I did. But also, you know, we really clicked because of 1969. Yeah. And, and uh, the separation is your documentary on the case, which uh, I was talking about with uh, another YouTuber that interviewed me last week or two weeks ago. And it's a great documentary. It's a great document. It's such a... Um, like it's it's your it's your style it's so it's just it, like what i love about it is it's no nonsense it's it's you showing all the different places and then you'll add in like oh and over there is mama where mama Cass lived and all that and it just gives you it, you can envision everything through what you're saying it's a really cool style thank you i i'd love to go back and do some of that over again because i've learned so much since we made uh but i'm but i'm proud of it because it, it was uh showing the locations that I'd, I'd never got to see before and all in one place and in one sitting. 
was pretty cool. And since then, you know, I've met the kid that uh, they found the gun. And I know Virginia, who, who was in prison with Susan Atkins, who busted the case. And, uh, you know, it'd be fun to add those little nuggets. Course, in there yeah. yeah. And then somebody asked about um, oh, Char- uh, my friend Charles, who actually was uh, filmed with me in Minneapolis. He actually doesn't have a question yet because his mind is literally locked because so many questions and comments are jamming it up. I'm so excited. I can't believe this. So he just went on and on. <laughs> and he never actually followed up with a question, but I want to give him a shout out because he's he says that pretty much all the content on Find a Death is a template for what a lot of YouTubers are doing. Hmm. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say all. He said some. Yeah, but, but that's sort of, you know, until I started doing it myself, it was you know, it was interesting because articles were published uh, by, you know, in proper magazines and uh, TV shows, documentaries. And I'm like, they got that from me. They got that from me. Yeah. You know, and I know that for a fact because I'm the one that did all the legwork. So yeah. that's the Internet. That, that is just what it's all about. You put stuff out there and it's up for hum- it's up for consumption. And it's good. I mean, it's good to, if somebody either gives you a shout out for it or, 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 or does it people are, if they're really fast about the material, they're going to find the source. They're going to, they're going to look yeah. and they'll, they'll discover you there. But that's why things like this, like our channels, which are similar, you know, you do the collaboration, YouTube's a community. And that's what I love. Mm-hmm. About. That's, I've, done, I've done about yeah, it. As long, I mean, you don't, it's people, some people really see other people as a threat, but there's so much information to go around. And what I'm still trying to wrap my head around is that, you know, the stuff I do, it's like, who wants to hear about Janice Joplin? Oh, my God, it's been done over and over. But then then Jordan, who's a friend of mine, Jordan, uh, the lion, he says, you know, but yeah, but it's your spin on it. It's your take on it. That right. People want to see. Yeah. And and it makes sense. I mean, I, I bought the book Hollywood Babylon when I was in high school, but I've probably bought 50 more books like it. And right. it doesn't matter. They'll, they'll cover the same cases over and over, it's but I'll still get every read. book. Yeah. So it, I'm still trying to, to wrap my head around that because it seems yeah. so there are no more new discoveries really. And uh, people, I mean, like people ask me to do, I, I've said it before in my life that people ask me to do back to the future all the time. And um, uh, nightmare on Elm street, the first one for filming location. I'm like, but there's gotta be a million of them out there. And then a lot of people yeah. say, well, we want your spin. We want to see it through your eyes. I'm like, Oh, okay. I get it. So exactly what Jordan, Jordan's right. Like everybody, Jordan and I have, have covered a lot of the same things, but mm-hmm. if we have different, views and different are you know act literally views like with the camera you know, yeah two different styles and it's great and yeah youtube yeah. Not, youtube to me is not a competition it's about it's about community it's about working together if you if you can and yeah. for everybody there's, and this i mean you still got to do the legwork you still got to do yeah. it in your own style there's a billion uh, hours of youtube viewed a day i think we all there's room for everybody yeah room yeah yeah so, okay, so uh, Jana, my friend Jana, uh, who's a lovely, lovely lady, and this is a cat I have for her, a stuffed cat that I use in my parody of a Lisa Loeb stay video that I did for Reality Bites Film Locations. This is Janice, <laughs> giving to her in Ohio, hopefully. Uh, she's asking about you living, about, about the Pond Spring thing that we covered. She wants to know if you and Troy are enjoying living outside of Hollywood, which we covered. And when will you have another live stream and when is the next podcast, Jana wants to know. Uh, I don't know. And I don't know. That's, that's the other thing about live stream. It's like, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it's so funny that, you know, cause I mean, it just, I, I feel like, you know, ta-da, here I am. What am I going to say now? You know, uh, uh, I, I enjoy interacting with people, but it's hard for me just to, to, set it up to go okay today i'm going to talk and what am i going to talk about now? well you'd be surprised i mean you would get thousands of views you 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 would because i i get i do one once a week i started doing it during covid just to keep myself entertained keep people entertained it's become a thing where people i get asked pretty much a lot of the same questions each week but i enjoy it and people yeah. seem to enjoy it so uh, you'll get the same yeah question. yeah i just have to get over myself in that regard i really have to i always feel like i don't know i i'm still I'm still shell shocked from having to change so much in the last year that, uh, and I'm still trying to uh, trying to understand what things are going to proceed. That's all, because right. uh, you know, nine months ago, God, six months ago, I never thought I would have been leaving LA, you know, and living in the desert now. So it, it's all I'm waiting for the dust to settle. But I enjoy doing those. It's just hard for me to go. Okay, now I'm going to go out and talk for an hour. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird. Why? You'll, be, you'll be surprised. And somebody's asked, Meg Smith, who's a regular watcher of my channel, 
has asked, and I don't know anything about this, if she thinks Matthew Roberts is Charles Manson's real son. Personally, no, I don't. No, okay. uh, you know, there's, there is Matthew's a nice guy. I've met him a couple of times. Uh, Matthew went to court because there's still a battle over Manson's estate, and Manson's, you know, quote unquote grandson. It's still not proven because he won't give any DNA samples. And another guy named Michael, who was Manson's good friend through pen pal and would visit Manson a lot. And, uh, and this Matthew guy who was, he thinks he's Manson's son. And throughout the, you know, the trial or, you know, you meet with the judge and the judge says, okay, the next time I want you to get this information and come back. And they went back, you know, all of them went back. Well, Jason Freeman didn't, the grandson, but Michael showed up and the judge says, well, do you have this stuff from Michael? And uh, he says, no. He says, well, bye. You know, so there was really no effort on his part, Matthew's part, to, to really go any further with it. Um, it's possible. He, he's also he's also really into self-promotion and he's also making himself look a little bit like Manson. You know, so there there is a, a uh, I, I don't mean no disrespect. He's a nice enough guy. I just don't believe it personally. OK, um, I, I didn't know I knew. So uh, Je uh, a few things we covered already. Jesse Taylor's asked about James Manfield car. You still have it. It's just on display right now. Uh, thing VNA and uh, regular viewers asking about a new museum. We covered that. Um, Abigail's asking if you would ever film inside the uh, Pacific Rim in Vancouver for Corey Monteith because I just did a video about that. She watched. She's a big Glee fan, but I don't. That's the, really the Pacific. What? Sorry, the Pacific Rim Hotel where Corey Monteith died. Oh, oh, oh! Did you get Sorry. into it? Pardon? Did you get in? I didn't bother, to be honest. I, did, I went to all of the, the places that he went to on his final day and I filmed, mm -hmm. like matched up where he was and then ended at the hotel. And then with COVID, I was in Vancouver. I was out West for a month. With COVID, I just thought, you know, it's hard enough going into a hotel state when you're staying there right now. Like, cause I was in, I was in a hotel for 30 days. So I thought going in with my camera, trying to go up to Koi Monty, I don't need to really. I just I can just film the hotel and talk about this is how where the sad ending occurred. Yeah. But, yeah. So she's asking that, but I don't think I don't think that's something that you know. Yeah. You, first of all, you got to get to Canada, and you can't come. <laughs> You're not allowed, right? <laughs> Especially <laughs> Scott Michaels. <laughs> no Americans. No, I would definitely check it out. I would. I don't yeah. know if I'd make that big of an effort to go up there, but I would. You know, if I if I was so inspired, I mean, I gotta really like somebody to make that kind of effort. Um, or or it has to be fairly easy. Now, when it came to uh, Mark Salling or or Naya Rivera, you know, th those two places were a real curiosity to me. I, I, I liked Glee enough, I did. But uh, Lake Piru, you know, she had just been discovered after a few days. Was a real I was just curiosity. about to ask you about Naya, so continue, that's perfect. Yeah. So it was really, it was something being there and, and seeing the the boat where she that she had rented was still there and uh, the lake, the area was still closed off. You couldn't go there yet, but there's enough of the lake to go around and see. And, um, and that was fascinating. It was a place I'd never been to either. And it's not that far from LA. So, uh, so that was good. And it was very haunting because it's a creepy, you know, it's like, it's like Loch Ness in a way. Yeah. Uh, it's so very, very deep. It looks and very it, desolate out there. I, I've never been up there. I've been up that way, but I've never been right to Lake Pir Piru as well. It looks beautiful. Yeah. In your video. And it's, it's so deep that I guess there's trees underneath there. And that's what's really creepy to think about. It's like full size trees underwater. Uh, would be really creepy and uh, to see. I mean, I could see it a little bit from the shore because it gets so deep so quickly. But uh, that was interesting. And the Mark Salling thing was very interesting too, to go out to where he hanged himself. Wow. Um, yeah, that was that was fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, then that's on your Grease podcast. You talk a lot about Naya Rivera. If anybody wants to listen to the other part podcast, that was on your Grease one where you spoke about her at length. That was yeah, the, uh, but I did the uh, the search for her on YouTube too. That, oh yeah, that you they, know, um, that great video. Yeah, yeah, that was. And the um, what was the other thing I was just going to say about that? Uh, oh, uh, uh, something I didn't ever touch on. Never told anyone this, but I don't think it really matters. There's a, a murder of, by a, of a guy named Robert Lee in Hollywood. You know the guy, the little screenwriter that's decapitated. Oh, He's yeah. like 90 years old. Okay, well, the woman who contacted me, who was his girlfriend at the time, she's in her 90s. Yes, her name was Helen uh, Colton. Uh, Did you, you know, say the name of the, uh, the the case again? Because I want people to look it up because it's, I went to the houses on your, I think it was on your tour. And then I went back. Yeah. Pictures again. 
but it, uh, Robert, the screenwriter, because it's a Robert Lees, L E E S. Yeah, and he he was like ninety. His wife had died of cancer. He was blacklisted in the fifties because they said he was a communist. And uh, but anyway, he's just coming to his own. He was just about to go and accept an award for all these cult movies that he that he was a screenwriter for. And one Sunday morning, he was asleep and a nut on uh, meth walked into his house, didn't break in. It was open and sawed his head off and then took his head and hopped the back fence and broke into that house and killed the guy who lived there and then took off. It was a crazy story. So he was on the tour. And then, I don't know, a few years later, I got a phone call and said, uh, my name is Helen Lawson or Helen Colton. And I live across from the street where Robert Lee's was murdered. And I want to know exactly what you say about him on the tour. I was his longtime uh, uh, companion, and I'm the one who discovered his body. And I have a great deal of information. So if you want, if you want to talk about it, call me. So it was like that was magic. That was, yeah. and she was so nice. And we, and I put that up on YouTube too. She was such a nice lady that I interviewed. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, she, just as an aside note, it took a long way, long time to get there. Leah Michelle lived right next door to her. At oh, that time, right on that street. Yeah, really? yeah. She, the Helen Helen Colton lived. Uh, there was Sally Struthers from All in the Family, uh, and then next door to that was Helen uh, Colton, and next door to her was uh, Leah Michelle, probably fifty yards from the Robert Lee's house. Oh wow! I was right outside of Leah Michelle's house that whole time. I didn't know. And actually, they <laughs> caught the guy that did it just about yeah. a block south of your former uh, museum. Yeah, right outside of Paramount Pictures, right, right at the yeah. corner there. Yeah. They saw him yeah. on the security cam footage. It's a crazy story. It's a good story. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that always really fascinated me because, you know, the little old man minding his own business, all of a sudden he gets his head sawed off. That was, and it's a nice little neighborhood. That little West Hollywood neighborhood is very nice. A little neighborhood. And I'm laughing, but it's not funny, but it's it's a great, it is one of the craziest. Now we'll, I'll go, I know you got to run, so we'll go quickly for. Let's go, let's go. I'm good. I got a couple of, because uh, one of the crazy, well, uh, before I get to what, the two craziest stories that I found fascinating besides Wonderland and the Manson murders. Cause you, you, I remember when we first met, you would ask me, you said, so what's your, what's your thing? What's your deal? What is it you like? <laughs> and is it Manson? And I said, I said, no, I said, I probably said Wonderland and um, I forget what else I would have said back then, but it was never Manson was never, Manson was always something that's fascinating to me. But anyways, Jojo asked, who's a regular viewer, how is it filming with Zach Baggins at the Cecil? Uh, well, you know, it's it was fun. I, I I've done I've done Ghost Adventures uh, three times, and this is the third. And uh, and uh, I you know I did some legwork. I was there with James Bartlett, my buddy who wrote the Gourmet Ghost, and he did a ton of research on the Cecil. And uh, and I knew more about Elisa Lamb than than the history of the hotel so much. But I did some brushing up. So when they they asked me to be on it again, I was like, yeah, sure, that'd be fun. So. I didn't realize I was going to be their, you know, their guide in the hotel. And uh, so and it, it was, it's weird because the Cecil is like a residential house, a residential, uh, like a, uh, what they call them single room occupancy, either a hostels or, or people that, you know, cheap living, the bathrooms down the hall kind of a thing, or the, uh, the showers down the hall. And they, since it's being renovated and then COVID happened, it's been sitting there rotting. The people, everyone that lived there have been moved to one floor to the second floor. But Zach and, and those guys from Ghost Adventures were paid a lot of money, I guess, and Cecil's on hard times uh, said, okay, we'll, we'll let you do this. So every single door in the hotel was opened and uh, and we were given free reign of the place. So when I said, you know, the Ramirez room, uh, we went up and opened up the door and there we were in Richard Ramirez's room. And uh, so we went through, through the whole hotel, uh, going to the more, more interesting rooms. Now, when I did it in my, my in my segment, we didn't go to the Elisa Lamb room, but a buddy of mine and I did go there before and, and spent the night in that room. So uh, and this time Zach made sure because I didn't shoot up on the roof and they didn't do much shooting on the roof either. But when we finished, Zach had one of his producers take me up because he knew that he knew that I'd want to history yeah. wise, you know, so I got to go on the roof and kind of poke around the water towers. Myself. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you see the water tower? Because you can't see it from the street. Unfortunately, you know, like, yeah. He wants to see the water tower. You can't see it from the they, street. They street. wouldn't let me climb up the ladder, but but I was able to get up to the ladder and up to the towers and, and have a good look at it to see that it wasn't that difficult for her to get up there. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, we're talking about Elisa Lamb was the the young girl who was uh, uh, Vancouver? Or Vancouver. She's from Vancouver. 
Yeah. And uh, and ended up disappearing. And they found her two weeks later in a, in a in a water tower on top of the building. She drowned and but she had clogged up the water pipes and and the water was smelling funny and tasting funny. And that's really why we're talking about this, because of because of that, because yeah. it was so shocking and so gross. And uh, and then people started digging up the rest of the stuff about the Cecil. Not a lot of people knew the Cecil. And then American Horror Story happened and based it a little bit on the Cecil. So um, I didn't know that. Yeah. The, the hotel one with Lady Gaga, that was that was supposedly based on the Cecil. Okay. And uh, so it was fun. It was good. And, and uh, you know, we went up to one room in particular where a murder happened. A, lady, a woman by the name of Pigeon Goldie, they called her because she used to feed the pigeons in Pershing Square and she wore a Dodgers hat and she was a retired telephone operator and she was murdered in her room, raped and murdered. Uh, and the rooms are not that big. The rooms are probably, I don't know, maybe 12 by 12 or, or maybe a little bit bigger than that, but not much. And so, uh, you know, I went to the Ramirez room and, you know, we went to the Unterweger room, the other serial killer that lived there. I uh, went to that room. I was like, all right, that was interesting. But then that room really, that was, that was, that was something I got pretty overwhelmed with. And I'm not big on, yes, I, I know the paranormal stuff exists, Yeah. Uh, but I also know that 90% of it is, is a piece of dust, not an orb, you know? Uh, yeah. And, uh, but that it was really overwhelming and I'd only ever happened to be one time before. And that was uh, at the Wonderland house. That was, uh, a lot of people ask me about it. Past story about to ask you about paranormal experiences or feeling weird, and you just answered that. So, yeah, they I, when I, when I go to these places, I generally try to. I want to see the last thing these people saw. Yeah. Uh, so when my friend who lives in May West apartment, you know, I got to go to her room and I laid down and I looked at the ceiling of this room. And I, that is the very last thing she saw when I was at Janice Joplin's hotel room. I looked at the ceiling. I looked at the floor. This is the last. Divine's hotel room. I was just about thought. to say that's my favorite picture of you of all time because I'm a huge Divine fan. So, yeah, I mean the, the picture so was, of you in that place is just one. It was episode. cool. It was, I wish I would have had a camera, a video camera at that point. Yeah. But uh, so you know, and, and something I haven't done anything with, but I have footage from inside the Marvin Gaye house too because that was open a few years ago, probably about 15 years ago now, and I have the worst quality cell phone video of me in the room where, where he died. And then, and I videotape myself going down the stairs like his dad did. Right. And, uh, well, if, so, you, uh, if you put a little timestamp, you know, like this or say this was filmed 15 years ago, people are going to, yeah. it's not like you're filming with an iPhone 15 years ago. You're filming. Right. With yeah. You know, people. So, will so, but when I go to these places, I laid down where Irving was killed, you know? So I want to see the last thing they saw. So at the Wonderland house, I did that. And, uh, and when we were at the top floor and I don't know which victim it was, but I, I sat down where he was found and uh, and just, I, I don't know, it's just like I said, it was just really overwhelming. And I just knew I wanted out then, right wow. then. And that's the same with that. And that with this that's wild. I did not know that about that lady there at, that, at the Cecil. Because I've been to the Cecil a few times and I filmed inside there twice. And I've never put the video up because there's a building beside it that is really fast, fascinating to me that I've, I've done two videos on it. That I've never uploaded because I can't get access to the roof of the of the flat little building right beside it. And I'll tell you mm -hmm. later what it what what was done there. Why I'm so fascinated with that building, but I cannot for the life of me. I need to learn Spanish because that will I think will help me get. So I think yeah. that's the question. Well, there's a few more questions, but they well fair amount of people asking the same sorts of questions. Oh, so if I left anybody out, oh, um, big sexy SW who I'm not sure I'm not sure who they are, but I know they watch my channel a lot uh, how many contributors does it take to run your site and i think it's just you <laughs> yeah 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 i mean people send you stuff like to like pictures or or you put in edits at the bottom like say it's thank you to whoever sent you some information but you run it yourself yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean it's it's putting together the stuff is the fun part uh, the research and going out and finding stuff it's putting it out there is the hard part you know is the editing and you know, uploading and this and that. And, and, uh, if anyone wants, you know, to step up as an, in, as an intern, let me know. <laughs> Cause I, I would, I could put out more information if I had more help. I just don't, uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around, you know, uh, final, final cut pro and sort to edit the videos and stuff. It's really hard work. <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm doing it full time now. And it's, yeah. Even though I was doing it with another job for three years, now that I'm doing it full time, I'm more tired than I was mm -hmm. before when I had another job. But uh, it, I mean, it's fun. It's very rewarding. So the last two questions for, for you. Well, not questions, because 
to go off of what you were just saying about the feeling you get, because I was at your place one morning, uh, just as you were going out on a tour, and I said, I really want to see the house where Johnny Lewis uh, attacked his neighbors, Johnny Lewis from Sons of Anarchy. And you said, okay, you told me the exact directions, how to go, you know, without GPS, without me having to turn yeah. on, waste my cellular data. And it's a very eerie feeling It's it, to know something like that occurred in there. So it's not necessarily a, a paranormal feeling I get. Same with you. It's just eerie. It's a very quiet little street up in Hollywood there where he did mm. that crazy thing. And so if anybody doesn't know, Sons of Anarchy star John, Johnny Lewis was living, there was a, it was a artist house, basically a home for artists, correct? And then he went. Yeah, it was a, it was like a den mother woman who would rent out these rooms to people and people, you know, tons of people over the years had stayed there. It's sort of like a, yeah, it was sort of like an Airbnb for up and coming kind of hippie esque or bohemian, you know, they were, it was just kind of, you know, a camaraderie, like a little dorm house for people. And, uh, and the nice lady who ran it, I forget her name. Yeah. And then, but, uh, and then Johnny Lewis was one of the people who stayed there who was half, Half Sack, I think is what his name is on Sons of Anarchy, yeah, yeah. who flipped and murdered her and then tried to kill the neighbor. And uh, it was nuts. But to, to, it's like the Tate stuff, you know, and uh, up in Benedict Canyon to know something so horrific that made, that would have made so much noise back then. Uh, and here we are in this really quiet street where all, you could hear a, 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 a branch yeah. cracking, yes. you know, 50 yards away. Yeah. So like, people don't understand. I, I, I say that like you, you literally go off of Sunset Boulevard or, well, that's not off Sunset, but, and one street up in the Hollywood Hills and you can hear a pin drop. It yeah. is really quiet. And especially that street where Johnny Lewis, you would think every neighbor would be out. It was, it's insane to me. And the other yeah. story is Yvette Vickers, which is fascinating to me. So yeah. if you want to talk a little bit about Yvette Vickers. Sure. Yvette, like, okay. So Yvette Vickers was, uh, you know, sort of a B movie actress. She was in, uh, Attack of the 50 foot woman. She was in a lot of sci fi movies, but she was never the star. She was an extra on Sunset Boulevard, which is an amazing thing. And I don't mean to discount what she did, but she never made it as an actress. She right. was, she did a Playboy centerfold. She was a beautiful woman, but at the end of it, you know, she was a bit dotty. And, uh, and uh, she lived in this weird house, like a cabin up in uh, Benedict Canyon and uh, ended up where she's kind of hoarder. She didn't take care of herself, she didn't care of the house. And there was like trees growing in her house through the house. I mean, it was, you know, these, these overgrown and black mold. Anyway, she died and nobody checked on her for a couple of months. And um, so she literally rotted away in her house and someone, and a neighbor. In summer in LA, right? Yeah. Yeah. And all her bills were on automatic payment. So it didn't raise any kind of, she had her, she had her mail stopped because she was going to Vegas. She told people she was going to Vegas. So nobody even thought about it. And then the mail, so we're tired of holding on to this and they went and dropped it off and it was piling up still. And that's when a neighbor got concerned and climbed up the hill and looked and found her what the, what they assumed was her uh, and by autopsy results ended up being her. So that was another one of those houses that stood empty for a long time. And then they were trying to sell it. And somebody I knew was in real estate and said, here's the key, here's the code, go now. So uh, I grabbed my friend Jane and we went up there and uh, were able to walk through it. And you know, that was when I caught a lot of shit for because I went, you know, I took some things, but, uh, you know, I'm not, my conscience is clear. We wouldn't be talking about Yvette Bakers if it was, or I wouldn't be if I didn't save the things that I saved. You know, she's right. in my museum. She's represented in my museum. People go, who is that? As Yvette Bakers. Let's talk about her for a minute. So, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't. I was probably being selfish, but uh, so what? I don't think uh, I don't think so. I, 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 for, first of all, I had never heard of her until I saw read about her on your website. I never heard. Yeah. Of her. And then it's a fascinating story. And then people giving you shit about like there's you know the rule is leave everything untouched. But something like this, where you know where it's from, uh, that I have for you, when it's going to be demolished and it's in the middle of nowhere, and no, and it's not attached to anything. And same, so it's the same with something in the Ben Vickers apartment. I uh, sorry, house. Yeah, it's be gone. All that. Yeah, stuff I mean, we. I, I was shocking because I opened up her medicine chest and it was full of all her stuff. It's and it's then really I walked over to the. Uh, I walked over to the kitchen counter and I opened up the door and a, a drawer and it was like there's a measuring tape and all kinds of tools. It's like I took, I still use a measuring tape every day. <laughs> I have a, I have a vet's name on it, you know. But it's like it's cool. I think about her. And, uh, and uh, you know, I took the paper towel holder. You know, I took a ton of stuff. 
I'll tell you on off camera about something like that. that I kind of <laughs> <want to say. laughs> you know, so so some people, uh, you know, thought that was offensive, and that's fine. Go ahead. I live with myself every day, and this is this is I'm fine with it because I my my thing is we're talking about them, and and you can't forget these people. And uh, maybe they don't want to be remembered that way, but they're still remembered and we're still talking about them. Yeah. So uh, to me, you know, it was it was a cool opportunity. The house is long gone. I she know. Long gone. Yeah. And I, tried to go, now, I went up to see it and it was gone. Yeah. 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 But, so, uh, you know, my, as I said, you know, people can judge me and that's fine. That's yeah. fine. What somebody I was just talking about this today when somebody said, what people think of you, that's on them. It's got nothing to do with me, you know. Yeah, and it's true. it's true. It's true. But how many how many grave sites have you uh, raised money like raised money for to get a gravestone put down? Quite a few. Yeah, we did a few. Yeah, we did, yeah, five or six. But uh, something. I mean, you know. Yeah. No. It's. I'm. I'm proud of what we do. I really am. I. I think that uh, uh, death eggs are, are good people. We. Yeah. You know. We, we have an unusual interest. But we're, I think we, when it comes to that point, we're, we have to honor the dead more than anything else, I think. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to keep you on here, but I'm going to end the video for a second. I'm going to keep you on to ask you a couple of things off camera. But uh, Scott, so Dearly Departed uh, is the podcast. Dearly Departed is the Dearly YouTube Departed YouTube. online. Yeah. yeah. If, you go to, if you go to any of my social media, it's all linked in the profile. My Facebook, Dearly Departed Tours my Instagram, Daily Departed Tours. And if you go to the profile, everything is linked up there to my YouTube channel and my podcasts and my souvenirs where you can buy t-shirts like this. And, uh, and yeah, so it's all, it's all there, but uh, I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate the shout outs and I appreciate you having me on. Thanks Scott. Okay. Don't forget Patreon. Don't forget the oh, Patreon. Right. right. That helps. <laughs> I, I have it too. It, it does. It does. It does. It does. Yeah, people it's don't still know. hard. It's still hard to sing for my supper. It really, is. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. It's tough, but you know, people, you know, it shows that what you're doing is is uh, appreciated and and liked. You know, you know, yeah. creating something. So, yeah. So, Patreon, YouTube, watch uh, Scott Michaels, and I'm gonna be uploading this video very soon. All right, everybody, thank you for watching, and we'll do it again soon, Scott. Right? Sure. Anytime. Well, thanks. Okay. All right, so stay on. I'm, not, I'm just going to stop recording. Bye, everybody. Peace out. I forgot to say that. All right.